to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 494. My name is John Morgan, and Cold Coffee is with me. And Cold Coffee, I'm not even going to lie, I have been wait. I feel like it's Christmas week right now, man. I have been waiting for this. I have been waiting for this week since the day the sphere opened. I mean, I'm talking about the week the sphere opened. Me and you were already talking about, could a fight happen there? What would it be? What would it be like? Well, the UFC looked at it, but wait a minute. They got they got MGM. Could they even do it? What's it going to be like? We were already talking about it. Then the thing gets announced. And, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I've not been able to look at anything else on the calendar except for this damn event since they announced it. And finally, it's here. I feel like a kid on Christmas. Please <laughs> tell me I'm not crazy. I'm not on an island out here that you are feeling the same kind of vibes for this event. I am feeling the vibes. But as funny as enough, I thought you were you were initially setting up that you're going to talk about how the weather cooled down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we were waiting for that because it's a lovely 86 outside. Earlier it was like 70 something. I was you like, know, we're here. The only we're way here. I'm not talking about the weather cooling off in Las <laughs> is Vegas if the first <laughs> is if the sphere is happening. Because yes, since you did bring it up, I did see next week like we're supposed to have some days where like the highs are only in the 80s. So Dude, it's the, the, so good. The hottest summer in the history of Las Vegas yep. is officially over and. Man, doesn't that just go to show you? It's the week that we're going to have outdoor activities. That's true. The the weather knew that the, the sphere knew. show was happening, and whatever yeah. entity you believe controls the weather out there, whether it be some higher being or some government <laughs> office or yes, right. some conspiracy theory of sorts, yeah. they even agreed, yo, we got to cool it off a little bit. These guys are going to have to be outside with That's their it. gear and all that. But, yeah, so it is cooling off, and it does seem that – Summer is officially over, and as I always tell you, yearly reminder, April or October. So you got you got a couple of weeks to get your thing get, booked get to come you, to get, Las Vegas. Get your shit booked. Um, and, but it's funny, you know, like the weather, the weather beans are taking care of things. The only people who are not playing game are California with all their fires. Oh, It seems a little bit better today. It, it got better, better yesterday. Today. Yesterday, you could not see the mountains You could not at see all, the mountains. And which, if anybody's ever, never been to Las Vegas, we are in a valley. We're, we're in a valley, so mountains. we're surrounded. Anywhere you look, there's and, mountains. And it just smelled like your next-door neighbor was having a barbecue or something. It literally <laughs> smelled like you had had a campfire in front of your house. And uh, it was crazy because I literally, at one point when I walked out to the car to put uh, my gear in there, it, you could see it. It wasn't like when you looked up at the mountains, you, all you saw was like haze. But I swear I felt like I saw like – smoke rolling through like the neighborhood like it was oh, unreal it was that thick. and it was that thick and it was like so like the smell of like like if you had a campfire and say you slept in your camp and then you get out and you have like the embers and that just that smoky sort of just yeah. subtle feel it was everywhere was, you couldn't, you couldn't get away like from it basically there's yeah. a, there's huge wildfires in like california multiple ones yeah like three different wildfires in california i guess all the smoke just kind of plummeted together and just like the people in California, the smoke wants to leave California and come to Vegas. <laughs> we got a lot of old Californians <laughs> moving into Vegas all the time, man. Look, hey, no state income tax, lower property taxes than they have in California, yep. lower cost of living overall. We're, we're and pretty And it's attractive. the home of the, the MMA Roadshow. You know, I, I hear people when they, they come and they move here. The, the second item on the ballot when they say, why'd you come here? And they say, I hear this is where the, the road show is. That too. I mean, you know? that's definitely up at the top. After the <laughs> loss of state income tax, <laughs> after the loss of property taxes, after the lower cost of income. Okay, or so cost of, three. Yeah. All right, so line number, number four. four. Number like four. The show. Uh, all right, listen, uh, we do always look quickly back, I guess, before we look forward. Uh, Sean Brady looked pretty phenomenal this past weekend. I talked about it on the yep. half episode. He looked great. Um, he looked great. And I thought it was a combination too. And I, and I always hate – Saying that because I never want to take away, especially because I'm a Sean Brady guy, right? Yep. Anybody that comes through CFSC, you know, I got a little bit of extra love for him. Plus, all his team, like I've seen them all the time around CFSC, his training partners, his coaches, they're a big part of our organization. So I cheer for him. So I don't, and I, so for him, I especially don't want to see that way. But I did think Gilbert Burns looked a little bit slow, a little bit flat, and I don't know if that was age finally setting in or just a bad night. But I did see that even Gilbert came out this week and kind of yep. said. Don't know what it was, man, but I was just yep. – I didn't have it that night. And I, I, I thought the same. But that said, huge win for Sean Brady. Yep. And, and I thought still answer a lot of questions. Look yep. fresh late. The striking is coming along well. I mean, he is looking like a guy that yep. deserves to be up in that top tier of the division. 100%. You know, it's funny watching it. And you got to give Brady the credit. Like, I felt like why Gilbert didn't look as good is because Brady was just so – 
much on his on his game plan, mm. you know, and he was very impressive. I, you know, there was a lot of us that were wanting to see just a jujitsu match between I know, the I two, did too. you know, and we never actually well, got it became that. very qu- like <laughs> I, like about halfway through round one, I was like, oh, these dudes aren't taking each other down. Like they were trying, yeah, but they're both so good defensively as well. I'm like, this That's is it. this is never, and it would hit the mat and they'd pop up immediately. I'm like, this is You're not, like, they're, they're not grappling. But what's funny is, you know, like I when I watched it, I was like, okay, that was very dominant from Brady. You know, like I clearly when I looked up and watched it, I was like, okay, Brady. Brady, Brady, Brady. And then the guy I respect, like, I only came back and he's like, he's like, I have it, because uh, he came back before it was done. He's like, I have it, um, uh, burns most of this. And I was like, uh, maybe I'm not watching the same. Because again, we were doing interviews and other stuff. I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, I'll give him credit. And then at one point, he's like, yeah, I think I, I, at the end, I think he swayed me. He's like, I'm 3 2 Brady. And I was just like, Wow, I did not have it that close, you yeah. know. Like when I looked up, then I made made me start thinking. Okay, well maybe I I obviously miss something because when you think about Gilbert Burns, I'm like, okay, you know, like he clearly can dominate and he clearly can do different things. But every time I look up there, I saw Brady having his way. So when you hear one judge, I think one judge gave him ten all rounds because I thought I heard I think two fifty forty five. Yeah, I thought it was fifty forty five. There was one that only gave him round four. And I think, and I'm I'm with you. I thought maybe three or four could could have went, but. But for the most part, it was yeah. it was Brady Brady. That's it was, what, no it was so surprising. I was just like, okay, clearly I'm not. So I mean, you know, so there were still people that saying that yeah. you know Burns was doing a solid thing. So I can't say that it was slow on him. I think he just ran into a guy that's just fighting really good right now. He I mean, is. like Brady is just in a good mental spot too, man. Yes. Both pre-fight and post-fight, yeah. he's really coming into his own, man. I think if anything, it just shows that Burns got to bring the he's got to bring the power throw back. The the clean shaven oh, thing like, does not. That's definitely not what it was the like. Fro, like Samson, the fro bro. Back. As soon as the fro was gone, as soon as he cut the hair. Just when he all. came in on media day, I was like, <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? And then he was commenting. I was like, oh, his facial hair wasn't. I was like, bro, I'm not talking about the facial hair. I'm talking about the top of your Where head. The like, fro, what bro. the fro, bro? <laughs> it's like, funny. I was like, I, you know, and as silly as that is, because he, I think he lost to coming into that or whatever. And I was thinking, okay, I can see where you want to change. You yeah, want to yeah. change. You know, look for a change. And now I'm just like, okay, well, that's not it. So put it, bring the fro back. Bring the fro bring back. Bring the fro back that's, for the next time. Really the I don't adjustment. want the shape. He's shirt. having a conversation with, like, Henry Hoof. They're in the gym. He's like, coach, have you watched the tape? Like, what do you think the issue is? He's like, the hair's got the to hair's go. Got to, it's got to come back. I want the fro and I want the uh, the overalls back. Oh, the- <laughs> Remember overalls that one time he came with the overalls? I, I was like, that. what is this look? And I'm in. I'm, I'm with it. Uh, I like amazing. it. I love Gilbert Burns. You were you were not a fan of the sport if you're not a fan of Gilbert yeah, Burns. Yeah, dude, he's man. such he's a good dude. Such man. a good dude. So whatever he chooses to do next, he certainly has. Look, overall, it was a fun event. Yep. Um, a lot, lot of fun fights. Good fights. Uh, and then I got to do uh, my, my interview with Dana White afterwards, which was nice. So I wanted yep. to give him a shout-out. It was uh, – I had been waiting a while to get some time with Dana. So uh, – I was kind of – it was kind of weird how it worked out. It, it actually worked out perfectly. Like, I ended up getting him the week before this Fear show, uh, you know, show yeah. that I've really been looking forward to. He didn't do post-fight media that night. He just came and talked to me. So, it worked out really, really well. Uh, I know that uh, the crew over at Grind City Media were, were very happy that we got that interview. And um, th- they are becoming more and more believers in the sport of mixed martial arts as well to see the uh, the success that we're having over there with the podcast and with the interviews as well. So, um, that was cool. Um, I, you know, got I thought a good preview of you know what to expect, uh, what Dana's thoughts were on the sphere and all that stuff. Yep. He gave us some little tidbits that I was wondering if he was supposed to give us, right. like the Easter eggs and other things. But I figure, like at some point, if you were going to talk about Easter eggs, you got to let people know right. to look for it before the show because the show is just about out, and nobody was saying anything. So I was glad that he finally started like really letting us see what was going because then yep. I think it helped the anticipation. I think so. You know, because for us, we're just like, okay, well, we're expecting this. We Now we know that there's going to be these movies and then there's going to be fights and then we've heard about these worlds that are going on in the background the whole time and it's whatever. That's fine. And Danny, you can visualize a little bit of that. But once you start getting a little bit more, now I think there's the anticipation to actually see and to think about what these are worlds going to be. And we had the I creative panel yesterday yep. that, that gave even more so information as for like the lighting, the different de- uh, technical difficulties they had to go to. We got to hear from the uh, costuming person. We got to hear from the director. We got to hear from a lot of the staff. And that, that archive is on um, the YouTube uh, over on the junkie site, you know that site that you you used to be familiar I, I, with. I vaguely remember. Vaguely remember. Vaguely them. remember it. Um, so no, yeah, but it was, I thought it was pretty interesting. So yeah, to hear from Dana, you know, uh, I thought it was great, and he was in good spirits. You know, that got a lot of good views for you. I know that was good. Yeah, no, it was really good. Yeah. Uh, it was. I will. I did want to address real quickly the Demetrius Johnson stuff because. Um, 
first, I, I think I've seen some people that were very disappointed that that he that Dana said that he defended Demetrius as much as anybody. Now, I can tell you, I lived that era. I lived all that time. I talked to him there. He did defend him for a long time. Yeah. And so I think that's what people – I think people have seen – well, first of all, there was no need, I didn't think, to push back because he had just said – the guy's going to be in the Hall of Fame. So I'm yep. like, let's leave it there. That's a beautiful thing. Hall of Fame. Done. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean. He was so good. He, one made a Hall of Fame for him. I mean, when you think about the legendary career that played yeah. out in one championship. <laughs> I, I, look, I don't blame them for putting him in the Hall of Fame. I mean, it, no. it, it, it does make sense. I mean, if there's a person to start it, you want somebody that, that crosses the board. You know, yep. like if you started with, you know, say, say, say Superlek, who's yep. an incredible fighter. The, the market for Won't where the recognition. It, it, yeah, like only one certain group of people are going to understand. So yep. it's better to start with somebody that has a global reach, and 100%. then then you build from that. So yep. I get it 100. percent 100. No 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 uh, issues with that whatsoever. But um, but I've seen a lot of people push back. They were like, oh my god, this guy's saying he defended. He did defend Demetrius yeah. for a long time. I know people don't want to hear that, but he yep. did because we asked him for years. Now, in the end, did he defend him? No, but it's kind of like, you know. It was just sour grapes a little bit at the end. 100%. You know, it's, but you know, but while while he was there and fighting, of course he was. Find somebody that gives me, like, glowing reviews of their ex-wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, for years they'll tell you what a wonderful woman that woman was. And then they break up and it's like, that bitch. You yeah. know what I mean? And now you're like, oh, I defended her all the time. You called her a bitch. Well, Man, yeah, but, but she yeah. became one. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to point that out because I did see a lot of people yeah. that were like, hey, dude, he always pooped all over Demetrius. He didn't actually. No. It was, it was, to be honest with you, it was more the media that was like, uh, he's not Why getting any you? pay-per-view buys. Well, that's, Why that's, isn't he, you know? That's it. If there was ever a fault with the UFC's treatment of, of DJ, it certainly wasn't when he was on the mic, but it was just like we always felt like he never got the promotion that he deserved. We right. never we never saw the promos built around him that he should have. If it was a fight night, of course, yes, you got something. But are we seeing, you know, goat packages on a random <laughs> fight night on an event that somebody's not at, no, we didn't get to see that. But granted, we haven't seen that except for uh, for Jones. We have never seen that unless it's somebody like leaving or retiring, like right. a retirement package. Um, but for DJ, yeah, that was always my gripe was I felt like they weren't pushing him out. But at the same time, this was when you know everybody's always been in love with the bigger weight classes, the big 100%. heavyweights. It's just an easy lift for them when you say this is the baddest man on the planet, and you got a guy that looks like Francis Ngannou or somebody huge like that. They get it. If you go and you say this is the baddest man on the planet, and then it's DJ, and you're like, okay, we got to talk about that. I feel, you, you know, know what's <laughs> funny is I feel like we don't hear it because if people don't remember this, this is 100 percent true. People, you would hear feedback all the time like. I could whip that dude's ass. Yeah, I feel like we don't hear that anymore, which is good. Fucking like you know, but you would hear that, right? Yeah. Like people oh, say, yeah. oh, the casual fan would be like, "Why would I follow the flyweights? Like I could beat that dude's ass." Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, no, you absolutely could not. <laughs> I remember having to have yeah. conversations like yeah. that back in the day. Yeah. Like, no, you absolutely could not. So yeah. it just. I but guess D- I, Dana used to say like D- DJ was one of the pound for pound baddest he guys. He did. So, you know, so I think people wanted to jump on Dana, and I get it. Any anytime somebody can criticize Dana, they want to, yeah. and I get it. He didn't at the end, but I just wanted to point that out. There were two reasons I didn't push back. One was the man said he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, so let it go. Yeah. And the other being that, believe it or not, he did defend him for a lot of time. It just took a while. And I always wondered about that, too, if it didn't help that he was so dominant in the early going. Not that that's his fault or that he should be doing anything else, but if that was one reason that it made it difficult for a division to catch on. Because, you know, we talked about this before, too, like, you know, People will tell you that the middleweight division wasn't that great when Anderson Silva was there. People will tell you the welterweight division wasn't that great when George St. Pierre was there. People will say the light heavyweight division wasn't that great when John Jones was there. Sometimes when you have a, a champion that's so dominant that you look back and it's almost like revisionist history. They're yeah. like, well, he didn't even have anybody to fight. Like, yeah, he yeah, did. He did. He, just, he just beat them all. He just beat you know? them badly. <laughs> so, and, but I wonder if that – you know, I mean, granted, the flyweight division, I would still say, is not the most popular division, at least among casual fans. I love it. But I wonder if that contributed to why the flyweight division didn't necessarily catch on early on and why they did talk about getting rid of it and why they did talk about dissolving the flyweight division simply because he was so dominant that people didn't even see the need. I mean, we, look, we've talked about it before sometimes with um, the women's divisions when we've had dominant champions, yep. right, where you're like, well, I don't think that any of them, like even a number one contenders fight, you're like, I don't care because I don't think any of them have a chance to beat Amanda Nunes or I don't think any of them have a chance to beat Ronda Rousey at the time or whatever it may be. So anyway. It's crazy, yeah, when you go back, I mean granted they were undercards for a lot of things, but you know, I guess with his time I'm looking at 
his his record and go back, but his fight right before he hopped over to the UFC against Damasio Page there at WC and then joins in the UFC, fights in Norifumi Yamamoto. Uh, the Burrell fight got canceled. Then he fights Miguel Torres, Dominic Cruz. The the Wildland fight got, uh, got canceled. Ian McCall, Joseph Benavides, John Dodson, uh, Moraga. I mean, like... Great fighters. Great fight. It was just, I mean, it was just the division. It was the division of like just season. smaller dudes that people just didn't rally around. And, and it just, I think it's just a, a bias against the smaller fighters. Because when you look at the individual fighters that he fought, they were killer fighters, man. Mm-hmm. It was great fights. I mean, um, I think people just, people just gravitate to, you know, something that they can't understand. And I think when you look at, these big, huge heavyweights and other stuff, they're just like, oh, my God, they're like mythical creatures, you know? Whereas, yeah, you get the guys that look at a fly. For somebody to be like, oh, yeah, and you know, like, oh, man, look at that. This Demetrius, this Mighty Mouse. He's even got a wussy nickname. You know, like, I could take that, dude. And it's like, bro, no, so true. you can't. So you know, true. like, stop. Like, stop. It's just, oh, it's man. ridiculous. But, yeah, I mean, at the time, I remember people just sort of just, like, always wondering because, like, when they would give them the headline events, like, Look at the UFC 178, Johnson versus Carriasso. How sexy does that sound on paper? Not great. Not at all. You know, and I mean, I think that's where people were shitting on because they're like, why do we want to pay for this pay-per-view of these flyweights? You know, like it just, they didn't have the same sort of like mystique to them. I mean, everybody admired the fact that they could, they're like the Energizer Bunny. They would always go, 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 go. And people always expected crazy action from round one to round five but people weren't getting a lot of the, the the finishes that people desired and i think that's what sort of put people off a little bit and so at that point people were thinking like oh well if these guys aren't getting those crazy finishes or whatever it, it must not be that great of a, a decision or, or that great of a division you know like why am i you don't even pay attention and it's just ridiculous because at the time i mean like those that were watching it understood that what we we saw when we saw DJ fight, we were seeing greatness. He just made it look easy, but he was fighting tough, impressive dudes. But I know it's a long tangent. I feel like we haven't talked about DJ in a we while. Haven't but a he's while, a great. He's a great. I mean, he. You know what's funny? Depend, he he deserves everything, all the accolades that he gets for what he did. When you when you were talking about Johnson Carrios, when that just randomly is the one that you pulled out, right? Yeah. To, to, to point out <laughs> as well, I was like, I remember that being a replacement. What was that? That was originally supposed to be Jones Gustafson too. <laughs> Gustafson pulls out, and it's supposed to be Cormier. Uh, so, so it's going to be Jones Cormier. Cormier didn't want to do it. And it, no, Jones got hurt. Oh. Um, and so then they moved uh, DJ and Carriasso from uh, the previous card to that one, right? But the undercard, you had Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier on there. So what do you mean they didn't support Demetrius? They put him on a Conor card. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> they liked him so much they put Conor under him. Where was his? Where was Conor's placement that. on the card? He was he was third. Look at that, Demet. That is crazy when you look back at that. Oh my God! Look at this card. So Demetrius Johnson carry off the main event. Underneath it, Cerrone Alvarez, McGregor Poirier, Yo Romero, Tim Kennedy, Kat Zingano, Amanda Nunes, Dominic Cruz, Tagea Mizugaki, Jorge Masvidal, James. James Cross, uh, James Kraus, I should say Cross. Sorry about that. James Kraus, Stephen Thompson, Patrick Cote. I mean, that's a Kevin badass Lee's card. on there. Man again, Bree versus Cody Gibson. That's a badass card. That is a badass card. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's so funny. Because yeah, if you look at the, the main event, you're like, uh, I probably don't even need to look at that card. But when you do look at the card, that that's that's impressive. I've totally forgotten that card. That's an impressive card. Anyway, all right, that's crazy. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about uh, Noche USC. Hold on. Bud Light presents Riyadh season Noche UFC U- at UFC 306. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> you, <laughs> let's talk it's about a mouthful. It. it is a mouthful, um, but uh, I, I'm excited about it. Um, I guess first, we don't really know what the show – I mean, we like you said, we know piece about the show. Like you said, we had that nice creative panel that was there. You've got that up uh, on, on the Junkie YouTube pe- uh, channel if anybody wants to watch the full archive. About an hour long, but they talked about a lot of stuff. That's a solid hour. Um, talked about a lot of the, the technical aspects of it. Uh, our assumption was right about the lighting that they'd been testing around yep. the UFC Apex. Uh, that will be in use <laughs> at the Sphere. I was. It's funny because – so Morgan asked – because we had talked about it before that there was lighting around the Sphere – or I'm sorry, around the Octagon that was under lighting. And after John had asked about it and a half, they said, yes, that was, in fact, for the testing. I leaned over and I was like, 
ask them why it was only around three fourths of the, of the cage. <laughs> Go all the way around well, the cage because the, when they didn't put it all the way around the octagon, it was only like three fourths of it. So it's funny because like we asked, but I was trying to tease John to ask, but you, but why only three quarters? We, we of the assume octagon? maybe like you ran out of plugs or the lights were on <laughs> can back you, can order. You clarify what happened there. What was the what was the break? But because you know why the spheres on the opposite side. That's the sphere side. I didn't even think about you it until so right now. Right. That's the sphere side. You don't you need light. You won't light the because they're going to have the lighting rig shooting down. You don't need to have the light. You're from so the sphere right. Side. That's Look at it. That. We just figured it out. That's great, man. <laughs> Look, we got. We could basically run the sphere now. I think. I think it's already so done. So this is all right. So this is pretty. I mean, all right, so I will say that the first thing I think it was, um, I think it was an interview maybe with Aaron Bronstetter that Craig Borsari had where I totally hadn't even thought about the fact that they won't have the lighting trust there, right? Yeah. Which they yep. could have if they wanted to, but they were like, that would be pretty stupid. Like, why yep. would you have the sphere and then have something that's blocking the sphere so we can't do that? So, you know, that was one of the biggest hurdles they had. You know, we talked about, will the Octagon even fit in the bottom floor? I still didn't ask him about the – I'm still a little bit worried about the folks up top maybe getting a little uh, – falling down a little bit after yeah. they have a couple cocktails. But, you know, I didn't want to – rain on anybody's parade or scare anybody that might be sitting up top it's a little steep up there yeah um but we talked about those things but the lighting was one that i didn't consider yep now you're more of a tech guy than i am um i thought it was very interesting the way they're explaining it and and I'd, I'd read it in a different interview but he kind of talked about it a little bit differently yesterday about how there's essentially lighting from behind the screen yep that's shooting through the screen yep how does that work? Can you understand like how that works? That you can shoot light through the screen and it doesn't manipulate the image. Well, there's still like from what he was making it sound, there's there's spaces that the right. light can actually shine through, and then it's just about lumens. So how bright is the actual image that's going to be on the screen so that it doesn't actually shine through? So it. If the screen. Those lumens are more powerful or, than your eye is going to see that versus as the one to the that's, light that's lower passing through that's it. It's going to and it's directional. So the lights that are going to be up and around, like wrapping around like the sphere, so they're going to be in a, in, a, in a different angle. So that was part of what he was saying too. So the angle of the way that they're going to go so that it won't affect any of the cameras that are actually shooting the the actual fight. So Because if they were just broadly just sort of pointed without really paying attention to where the camera's going to be, you would have that bright light shooting into the lens the whole time. So they're directionally – they're going to be making sure that they were directional – pushing down the thing and it's going to be complemented with lights in the front as well so i mean there's there's lights that are you know forward underneath like uh seatings and other other sort of stuff so they're going to be pushing down so it's going to complement it and it's not like it needs a crazy amount of lights right. to light the actual octagon octagons what 30 some foot wide right, right. you know so it's not a crazy amount of light That's that they're too. going to need you know even when we saw um when I saw you two there and they did some crazy thing, they were lighting so that the effect splashed across primarily most of the floor space. That's not what they're going for here. They just have a very defined area where they want it. So I think that they're able to kind of do that. But, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see um, how it looks. But I think they're going to be able to do it with a, a decent amount of lights but not going too over right. the top. And, again – you know, what I found interesting is when you look at the, the most expensive seats that are happening are in that mid-level. So I still believe that they're going to, you know, because they say that the octagon and the fighting is going to be taking place within this world. You can't be looking at a floor and miss the screen because you're not going to see that it's in this world. So I think while you are close enough on the floor to actually look into the octagon and see the fight happening whereas say if you're at the event a lot of times your eyes always go up to the screen because you want to see what's going on i think that's what's going to happen here is that you're going to be able to see a better view of the fighters fighting within this world if you look at the oh, actual wow. sphere cool space instead of actually looking at the ground because you're not going to see the background because if you look around the ground you're going to see seats you're going to see the, the octagon you're not going to see the screen so they're going to shoot the octagon so that that is placed up within the world so you're going to want to look at the, the, the screen so that you see wow. the fight happening within this world. Because they say the world's going to... It's a dynamic world. It keeps going. Right. So And it transitions. So the, the prelims are not going to be... So the prelims are going to exist in whatever generic world that's going to be up right. there. And then so, it's going to... And I want to point that out real quick as you continue going. If you tune into the prelims of this thing, and you're this is from what I've been I've heard some rumblings of is that yeah. the, the the real thing is built around the main card. So if you tune yeah. into the prelims and you're like, what's this fear about, man? Like yeah. it's still going to be special, 
but yeah. you're not seeing the real bells and whistles until the paper. Yeah, because all the movies, the movies and other thing, that's the transition into the main card. Right. There were six films. There's, uh, yeah, six films. Six there's films. five fights on the main card. So the there's a transition that takes place after the prelims movie goes in the first fight. It the world will transition. So the world's gonna transition from whatever the prelim world. Play the movie, and then it's going to transition the background, and then you're going to see the fight, the walkout, and all that stuff's going to transition into this world. So while the fight's happening, the world still exists, and it goes. And at the very end, then at the very end of that fight, it's going to go into a movie, and that's going to help it transition into the next world. And then the next fighters come out, and then it's going to be this world, and then that transitions to a movie. So it, it's there's going to be this beautiful, hopefully unique transitions. And when we got to hear the director talking, it's not just a the world itself is not just um, – they're, they're having fun with it. There's going to be a drawn world, they yeah. were saying. There's the ends on a futuristic world that work the, – there's other, you know, things. So it's going to not just be like – when I watched another show, it was just like crazy lights and, and lots of just design and other kind of stuff. And at some point, you stop paying attention to it like because it's just – like karate combat, karate yeah. Combat, where where they've done some green screen stuff, where they yeah. take you to another world, but it's not. But that's it. Yeah. And that, and, but and for them, from for the most part, they just stay in the one world, right? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they, but they, they've done like different, sh- like each each show, which is, is very cool. Which is super cool. It's super cool what they're doing. This will just take it to another level because you're going to want to watch the transition. And for people that are worried at home, like, okay, well, we're not going to experience. So what they've been talking about is that they're bringing in another director to try to seamlessly. Show what's being shown on the broadcast, but also incorporate elements from within the sphere so that you feel like you are experiencing parts of the sphere without just feeling like you're watching a regular fight broadcast. Because if you're watching just the fight broadcast and say you're seeing um, the fight happening, I'm sure the way that they're going to broadcast it. So like if you're there, you're going to see it within this world. The broadcast will show that as well, but there, I think there's going to be moments when they play the film, you're going to see the film full screen on your thing, but then it can go back and then he'll have the luxury of showing the world and the fight, but then also show movement within the the arena, the inside the, the sphere right. as well. They said they're going to have drones showing outside shots, so some of the outside exoskeleton, which they said they they haven't even really included us in, but they said that there's some some neat things that are supposed to go I on. I did that. see like they're going to put like fight highlights on there and fight stuff. Fight highlights. I mean, I mean, like the sphere, the exo. That's what's so crazy about it. the inside is incredible, but the outside exoskeleton of this sphere is just as dynamic. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's the it's, it's the part that goes more viral than anything else because you yeah. can't really shoot the inside of it. But it's like yeah. you see all these shots on the outside, like. There's going to be clips. Like everybody this thing in is Vegas, so viral. That's, that's, it's that's gonna it. Be so People viral. in Vegas are going to be shooting pictures of this because who knows what you're going to be seeing? Giant whatever. You know, maybe maybe they broadcast every walkout and you get to see this immersive world, and then you get to see this giant fighter that you love walking through this space. And then all of a sudden, you're seeing highlights of face punching. I just the I, size of a building. <laughs> I am so excited for this event, and I and again, I, I do think it's difficult. And I mentioned it to Dana in that interview that I think. There's kind of like two camps of this. Basically, if you've been inside the sphere, you're like, this is going to be dope. Yep. If you've never been inside the sphere, you're like, eh, I mean, how, how special could it be? Yeah. It's going to be special. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I. They're it, certainly trying to take the effort to make sure. When, yep. when they said that they were bringing in, outside of just the people to, to run the, the inside show for the people that are in attendance, to bring in a whole nother TV crew with another two trucks, just to make sure that the broadcast to people at home have a sense that you are part of this thing. That, that The fact that they are worried about that shows that they care and that right. they're putting money. They're not just saying, okay, just take the broadcast, the program feed, and put it out there. Because then, yes, yeah. you, you might be able to see what's on the sphere, but you're not getting a sense of the room. You're not going to get a lot of the other shots. The fact that they hired a crew that, and they said, your job, don't worry about the screen inside here. That's going to take care of its shit. Worry about make sure that the people at home are getting the best, coolest broadcast to feel like they are part of this without being in here. And this guy's like a world-renowned like director or whatever. I mean, it's crazy to think that they're having multiple directors taking place. You have the normal guy that's calling the fight action, that's calling the actual show that we normally see. It'd probably be Anthony or whatever. But then you have a person that's actually directing and running the sphere screen itself, the sphere inside screen, the sphere exoskeleton. And now you have another director that's actually directing the broadcast a different broadcast portion to make sure that the broadcast is the best possible thing. It's 
It's sick. It's, it's insane. It's ridiculous. I, I love it, man. I just I, it could be a giant colossal fuck up well, if shit fucking goes wrong. But that's why they're. I love that now they've been practicing. They've been even the thought that which I didn't realize when they said about in the the creative panel. Since the timing of not being able to get into the sphere because it's so busy, a lot of the directing, a lot of the work that they've been doing, they check it all out with VR, VR units helmets. from their home. Yeah. Like how crazy cool. And I loved how he's explaining when you have a screen that big, when you see a movement of the camera, if you try to make it move, say if you're watching your TV and you're doing a quick pan or whatever, when you see it on the square, that little TV in the corner, not maybe not your little 75-inch ones, <laughs> uh, but when you see the move, your brain adjusts to it, and you're like, okay, cool. It's not a big deal. But yeah, when yeah. you see something so big that it's bigger than the, your, 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 field of vision. your field of vision, it could be disorienting. And so one of the people you know, that's part of the project was like, we got to watch what we're doing, or we're going to make people sick. And you, you know what? <laughs> and you got to respect that because they said it was like one of the assistant directors or yeah, whatever. To, I love that. To, to, to be in a room with all those people and all those powerful people and all these money-spending people and everybody, yeah. you know what I mean? To have the guts to go, hey – I don't think this works. Yeah. Respect. Because yeah. some people would just be like, mm, I'm not saying shit. I'm telling you, the film school part of me was loving hearing like all this shit yesterday when we were talking about like the, the costume design and all the other shit. I was just literally like, to me, because I was talking to Jose Young about it. Um, I was like, dude, I don't know about what you thought. I was like, I know a lot of people were into like the media day interviews, and that's great hearing from the fighters, but I was I was loving hearing this, the behind the scenes about what this is, the production, what's going into this. It's so amazing. A lot of, yeah, 100%. I mean, look, the fights are amazing, man. They, they really are. And I want to get your thoughts on especially the top three because there's some, there's some, there's some key ones that I'm actually torn on. But, yes, the production itself is why I've been so excited about this. I've said it from the beginning, and, and I stand by it. it, could, it the, the UFC could have put it on 10 amateur fights on Saturday night, and I'd <laughs> be right. just as excited about it because you know this thing is going to be crazy. I still don't complete – even with them explaining the goal, I still don't completely understand how the in-home experience is going to – like yep. how they're going to be able to translate that to TV because – I look, again, I'm, I've been inside the sphere. Yep. It is going to be insane. Now, I don't know. Look, at this point, I don't know where we're sitting. I don't yeah. know if we're in there. I don't know how long we're in there. There's I mean, we, we don't know anything. So I'm, I don't know if we are actually going to be able to take it all in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but the people that have the good seats, that pay for the good seats, yeah. they're going to experience something special. There is no doubt in my mind about Did that. Did you see? I saw one of the price things that came out, I thought, the other day. One of the most expensive seats were the seats that were right behind the octagon with the sphere behind them. Were they really? They were like thirty or forty grand. I was like, oh. "How does that work?" It's funny you I was say like, that. Do they get to push the haptic buttons? Like, <laughs> they're like, in this seat, you get the button, you, you can push it as much everybody. as you, you can push everybody. Um, yeah, you know what? That's that's interesting because it's funny. I had a uh, because uh, uh, you saw Dana's Dana's people. I think are opposite it, looking at the sphere close to the octagon. His VIP section. His VIP section is looking at the sphere. Yeah. And then there's a section on the other side the with the sphere behind, behind them. You. Like that. I mean, granted, you can still probably look up and see it. I'm the only reason why I think that it's probably so much more is because for some reason they're going to be in the they're just like, their angle. Gonna they're going to be it. in the world somehow. That's interesting. You know, it's funny because I've had a couple people reach out to me that were like, "Hey, man, like I I got to go to the show. Like, you know, what, what's the you know where can I get the the VIP tickets and stuff?" And I, and it's funny. I told everybody, I was like. You, this might be a, a show where you don't want to sit as close as possible. Yep. You know, normally, like if you're if you're at a big, you know, you're going to Madison Square Garden, you're going to T-Mobile Arena for the, the the big fight. You're like, bro, if I can get front row, I'm buying front row. Here, I don't think you want to be in the front row. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so that all goes into me saying that I know the live experience is going to be special. Now, I did think it was. Uh, refreshing that even Dana in his interview with me and heck Craig said it the other day. It was like, is it going to work? I don't know. We'll see. We'll yep. take a look Section at. five right behind him. Thirty two thousand or forty two thousand dollars. Oh, and then you see the Zufa section. So there's God. Dana and there whatever. Those have got to be resale. That's got to be right. I don't know. But this Vivid is through seats. Vivid Seats. That's got to be resale value. I don't. But still. But I don't know if that's the right place. To, that's, I definitely doesn't feel like that's the right place to, unless you're saying like. You but said, I mean, with the, two, the, the two hundred ones, which are that sweet spot where even like they, I think for the YouTube VR thing that's coming through, I think that's the section mm -hmm. where they try to do it. This on this vivid seats, those are still around two grand or so. But when you start going up to the three hundred, four hundred top, those are now down to a uh, thousand or like five hundred and some bucks. The floor yeah. seats or the lower section uh, or the one hundred level are. 
roughly 2000 and, and below or something like that. So the prices have came down yeah. quite a bit. Okay, know. so that's, that, that beckons something interesting, right? I feel like there's been a lot of debate over whether this is a success for the UFC or a flop for the UFC. I've seen yeah. boxing media especially seems to be trashing it, right? Like they want to build up Canelo, I think, or show that boxing you know, outdid the UFC. Uh, the tickets, the ticket prices definitely have come down for where they initially yep. started. Still, by the way, uh, trending to be, I believe they said a $24 million gate, the biggest in the history of the UFC. So if you can fail it's like that. It's got to be the biggest in the, f- the sphere. I mean, oh, 100%. I mean, like that's just ridiculous. So, like, so first of all, just let's just stop it there. It's a $24 million gate. Didn't, let, let, let's say there's 2,000 seats remaining on fight night, and it's a $24 million gate. Sir, that is a success. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you could quantify it any other way. You generate a $24 million gate. That is a massive success. Um, the other thing I saw, and I believe it was uh, a sports business journal that put out a record number of sponsorships with this, right? Like yep. a, a bunch of corporations have come out, and because of the visibility of the sphere, because of the visibility of this event, they're saying, I want to be a part of that event, and there are people that haven't sponsored before, and they're paying. I did see also um, one of the senior VPs was talking about how you know they sold this to, to Riyadh season, and it's the very first time that you've ever seen a, a sponsor before the UFC, right? This the, the presenting oh, yeah, yep. sponsor, yep. and they said, well, we now have a price tag for what that costs. So you know this is this is what Riyadh season came in. Bud Light, you want to do that? Uh, yep. Wingstop, Buffalo Wild Wings, you want to do it? Well. Here's what they paid. UFC 306 at Riyadh season. No Jay UFC. Just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Just, Just rolls, rolls off the tongue. Off the tongue. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, it, it, so so here is my thing. Is that I just feel like a lot of people. Again, we haven't seen the live event happen yet. Yeah. Let's point out the people that do this for the UFC are the best in the business, man. They legit are incredibly good at what they do. So I believe it's going to be a success. But Dana told me we don't know if it's going to work. Craig Borsari said. We don't know if it's going to work. We think it will, but maybe it won't. So they don't know. Yeah. I think it's going to work, and I trust in them. But regardless, it's already a success. It's a massive financial hit for them. And I think the amount of viral videos and clips, uh, this thing, I mean, the number of social media impressions that this thing generates is going – look – it's going to get close to power slap in terms of in terms of social media views. I mean, I'm just saying they might. <laughs> it it might come close. Might. I mean, those numbers. I mean, the fact that you know you combine all the other sports in America, I they mean, can't touch gonna, it. You dude, know, I'm this might this, come close. Every, I mean, obviously ESPN is going to have a. I'm best surprised interest, they didn't put sponsored by Power Slap up there or something. Then Power Slap just to generate off that SEO nut value UFC or something. 307. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, no, but kidding aside, this thing is going to be a viral sensation. It's already been a corporate sponsorship uh, since uh, success. It's already been a gate success. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I just I feel like there's been people trying to take shots at it. And I just, from a business perspective, and I believe from a fan experience perspective, but we're going to find out on Saturday night, yep. this feels like a home run, man. Yeah, and, and when you, you know, like, so you've covered the business aspect, you know, the money behind it. But when you look at, you know, when you want to just say, just for the technological advancement of what they've been able to do, like, people are going to use this as a high bar at some point that they want to then breach. So you got Dane over here saying, I want to get an Emmy. I want to get an Oscar from it. It's funny. like He wanted a know, Grammy, and he wanted a Tony. He wanted a Tony, which, you know, <laughs> which, you know, unless you can somehow get this on Broadway, you're not going to get a Tony. That was a very know? funny part where Craig like- <laughs> had basically said, look, when, we don't say no around here, but when he said he wants a Tony, we had to explain to him. <laughs> we can't get one of we those. We can't get one of those. It doesn't <laughs> go on Broadway. So the answer is no for that one. But, I mean, like, it. so even just in terms of if they're able to pull it off, the, it's a win you know, in my book mm-hmm. right there. I mean, just like, you know, when you want to take um, – and we all have our different categories of, of how, why somebody's the GOAT for our – you know, in one in one f- fashion, Dana has Ronda Rousey up here. and another fashion, somebody might put Amanda Nunes up there or something like – when you put what your criteria of what you say is a success and a win, for me to be able to pull this off the technological – aspects behind it regardless of the money value that you're bringing in at the door if they're able to pull off what they've trying to achieve and have this broadcast go off how they did and the combination of film and stage in a sense uh art 
with an actual sports thing, it's doing something that doesn't normally happen. Like so, in my book, if they're able to pull that off, that's a giant win right there. Even even, this not a, even counting the the gate. I was gonna say you're a hundred percent spot on. Even if this was a financial loss, which I don't think it'll be with Riyadh season. Yeah, with, the, the, the Riyadh's already of, guaranteed the money. Exactly. Like with the all the corporate fine. sponsors, like they're it's yep. gonna be profitable. But had they lost money on this event, but they pulled it off. It would still be a success. Still be a win because now you're on the you're on the leading edge of sports world. And yep. what does that do? Now every every top executive in sports wants to come work for you or wants to come work with you or like you know what I mean? Like that, all of a sudden people are are, are aspiring to be you and yep. to do what you did. You remind people why you are at the top of your game. You know, like people now are like they're like, oh man, well so and so did something great, but you have did you see that fucking event they put on at the Sphere? Like, yep. how do we beat that? How do we do that, you know? I, I think anybody that is looking at this as anything other than a massive success for the UFC is thinking incredibly small-minded about, you know, a, yeah. a narrow approach to and, it. And, I mean, and we're still here thinking that, you know, and we're we're still hoping, I mean, Brian, we want it to go off seamlessly. It is based upon it going seamlessly perfect. Shit can always happen. Oh, my God. And I don't want it to happen because, uh, you know, bad. I want to see the fantastic thing because uh, there's so many people involved in it. So many people have delved so much of life. And that was it's even the – 500 the, people, they said, had their hands on this thing. Yeah, and when when, when Barsari was asked yesterday, like, are you guys – should this go off grid? Are you already willing to go? And they're like, well, we got to see how it even goes, how it even happens. He's like, but if we did and it, we deem it a success, I want to start the day after that working towards it because that's how much time and effort goes into this. They realize that now I have seen it, this one and then have to do it. He's like, if, if it works out and we deem that we need to do it, we got to start the next day because it's not that easy. Obviously we think we're thinking like, Oh, I mean, what's it take? You shoot a few, vil- you shoot a few films. You test a few things, you, you know. You strap you do, on your VR goggles. You strap on your VR goggles. You can sit at home. You drink your coffee. How tough is it? <laughs> like, if you got these guys that we know put on great things, like s- literally saying, like, guys, this was really, really hard. If we're going to do it again, give us as much time as possible so we can prepare for the next one. Please tell That's me. That's saying something. <laughs> please please tell me you, you saw the interview with Dana when he was like, you know what rendering is? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't see that part? No, oh, my God. God. <laughs> How did he describe it? There's like this little line so on they, the screen. It just runs, and they, they tell you it takes had, a long time. They had to. That was the one. That was probably the funniest say, thing. Dana did they hire like a server farm or something? They, they had to build one in the yeah. spheres. They had to build a server fa- farm in the sphere. Just to crunch, J- yeah. just to do it. So he's like, it take. He's like, it takes like twelve days to render. He's like, you know what rendering is? I'm like, <laughs> Dana, I've known you for twenty years now, and that might be the funniest thing you've ever asked me in my <laughs> life. Like, yes, I know what video rendering is. That's like, hilarious. I've, I've spent a lot of my time rendering. Video. I mean, that's that's the the size and the depth and the of these things, I mean, the worlds themselves, it's so immersive. It, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, I hope we get – I know we're going to get out there and we're going to see a little bit of it. I mean, this may be more so than any other event where I'm normally stuck in the back. I would probably be grumpy that if I don't get out there. Yeah, yeah. I understand it because if I don't, because I get it. Space, There's only so limited limit, space, so and, and it's not like You don't know what access is going to be. Yeah, we, we I know, get it. We know we're going to the press conference tonight. We're going to ceremony away and tomorrow. Both of those are outside. Yep. Um. I guess when we get there, we'll see if there's a tent or something set up outside. I I, I don't know. As far as – from what I hear, we're definitely in there. In the building? We're in there. We're behind – we're going to be behind the lighting rig that they're setting up. Got it. Supposedly, there's some sort of a room. <coughs> so, I don't think we're going to be able to see, okay. you know, the normal, like, behind the scenes like we would in, like, an arena where you're seeing the risers or you're seeing a lot of the other stuff. We will be in some sort of a room um, in there. Um but as for, you know, the passage of that room, I'm assuming when I've seen the the other concerts that opened up and allow people from the back into the front, you literally have to open up something that takes part of like the, the, the screen, like that area. All that area right. is part of it. And usually it's behind the, the stage where, you know, either you have other image up ab- above or it's dark. So I imagine there's either some sort of aspect, but at some point there's only going to be so few key points where – if that is the passageway that we have to go out there, if not, we're going to have to wrap all the way on the front and then they have to bring us in some other one. But they're not going to open up anything on the, no, the, the thing at any point unless there's a clear time for it. But I think once the show gets going, they're not going to. So it's going to be a pain in the butt to route us from the back all the way to the side just to get in there. Yep. Almost to the point where some of us were talking like, okay, well, if, if it's so-and-so's turn to finally get out there, 
just we'll, we'll hand footage to each other so yeah, that yeah, yeah. so so somebody can't miss yeah, you it. Got, you know? got to work as a team. You got to work as a team. So like, everybody gets a chance. And somebody's like, oh, but aren't they your? You know, that's your your competition. But when you see somebody more than you see your family, like I get it. It's competition. But at the end of the day, if they're doing the work and it's my turn to go out and see it, if I come back and you don't give me the footage, I'm gonna fucking hate you. And you better. <laughs> but I would do the same for you. Like if you go yeah, out there yeah, yeah. and it's somebody I know that would normally be seated recording it's different if a guy's like oh i just showed up and you know like hey can i get your footage I'm like no right but if you're there grinding there working and it's your and, term, oh, and way, it's your time to go out with me every single week in the apex you know what i mean like like i'm not going to deny you you want to go see one you want to go see something at the sphere that we're only going to get one chance for yep one chance we're I only going to get to go out there once i'll hit record on your camera i'll hit record or, or I'll, I'll give you my give you my footage 100 percent. that's yeah. a that's just the way it works so that's how we've already started like talking about it because we have no there's no guarantee that all we have is just words from the PR that said, we're going to try. We're going to try to rotate you out there and let you see what's going on. But that's that could be just a, a happy, empty promise at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm, I've already kind of prepared myself that if it doesn't happen, I get it. Would I be upset at the end of the day? I'd be like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. But, brother, I live in the back of every event. Hey, I'm, I'm t- in a tent. Some, some, some events, I never make it even into the venue. Yeah. I'm in a tent like, in the back, not even in the in parking the lot. I'm not even in the building, so, like, I get it. It's, well, I'll tell you what. So, it's funny, like, uh, after we wrapped the interview on Saturday night, as Dana was walking out, you know what I mean? I was like, hey, man, appreciate the time again. I was like, you know, looking forward to seeing how it all comes out on, on Saturday night. I was like, I don't know what perspective we're going to have of it, uh, you know, but uh, but I'm looking forward to checking it out and seeing how – and he actually looked at – because Lene was there. Uh, Lene Breckner is the head of PR, and he's like, yeah, I don't know what Lene's doing with media, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. Like, yeah. so I don't even th- – I don't know if they don't know yet. They're still trying to figure it out. Or... I guarantee we're the least worried about oh, what they're – Oh, 100%. The he's least. Like, he's like, you know, there are people paying for the show. You guys, <laughs> you're there to criticize us? Like – You'd be grateful we're letting you in the building. <laughs> I'm telling you. So here's the other interesting thing, too, because, you know, we talk about will they be able to do it again. Now, I did ask Dana about that, and he said, look, um, I do have a deal with, with MGM. Despite all the troubles yep. and all that, I got to deal with them. He's like, so if this was a one-off, and so it was a one-off. Now, if this thing is so cool and get and as successful as I think it can be, um, I could see them trying to move to do another one. And it's kind of funny because then I can see people going, Dana lied. They ain't lied, you know. Yeah. They they knew they were always gonna never do one. That's not right now. It's a one off, but I I I have high hopes that this thing is gonna be so damn cool that they're gonna that they're gonna. It's it's gonna be contingent to on the same thing of whether they're gonna have sponsors. They won't do it without sponsor help. Like they would never eat twenty plus million on UFC dollars alone. Like yeah, I think if it goes off well and, and the sponsors are happy from the the coverage that they're getting, everybody's happy with the numbers. And they jump back on board. I could see the UFC wanting to do it, um, but if they were on their own, I, I wouldn't see them doing it again. But I, I guarantee, if Riyadh season and Bud Light and somebody else stepped up, money money speaks. I mean, because if money makes it all happen, as long as they got the time. But from what I thought, I heard him say earlier, there's no guarantee that uh, Noche UFC has to be in Vegas. Right. He made it seem like that could be on the road. They want that date. Doesn't mean that that needs to be in Vegas. I thought he said at one point he was talking about maybe taking it to Mexico, taking it to other places. Yep. So, you know, doesn't have to be at the Ape, uh, at the Sphere. Doesn't have to be at the T-Mobile or the MGM. I know he wanted to get that date, but I think if anything else, this opened up his eyes. Where, okay, well, if you're possibly gonna MGM be weird and you're gonna do other stuff, and this might be a battle that we have in the future, again for that particular date, we'll take it on the road, and then you know. Then it would be, just be back to a regular, you know, event. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be in the sphere. But um, yeah, I mean, there's no guarantee that they'll do the sphere again. There's no guarantee that they're going to do the the next event even here in Vegas. But right. if it is if it is a win for them, and I can see that pr- and sponsors want to do it again, I don't see why they wouldn't. I wonder. I, so I'm wondering if um, all the sponsors will get at least some time with their logo on the exosphere because you know that last oh yeah you know what i mean you figure that's got to be a part of the deal you already. Would think so right because yeah. that's because that's that looks cool right you know what i mean, I mean look and then how you can prominent run that, that season oh. is in the logo i mean like that's pretty impressive just shows yeah. you whatever that dollar value was crazy um but yeah i mean oh, you said like 20 million last time right that yeah was, that was that was in the public report yeah it's pretty crazy Man, all right. Well, listen, hopefully you guys are as pumped up as we are. We'll see how it turns out home. Let's talk about the fights themselves. Uh, you know, I, I know people will do better jobs of breaking them down than we are and, and whatever, but – Those are I, called analysts. Those those are analysts. We're yes. analysts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> take it in that direction. <laughs> no, I don't even say anything. Uh, all right. I was, so, I was like, oh, you're just teeing it back up. I know. I said it right there. I, just, I had a couple jokes in my mind. And I, just, I, I literally, <laughs> that pause you heard in my voice was me <laughs> vetoing in my own brain several different continuations of that line of thought. And I said, nope, bad idea. Don't go there. Um, all right. So, listen, I got to be honest with you. All three of the top fights, I am right down the damn middle on. We'll start with the main event, Sean O'Malley and Marab Davalashvili. Since the day it was announced, I have said I believe Marab Davalashvili is an absolute stylistic nightmare. Um, yep. He's on an incredible win streak. Even his first two losses in the UFC were controversial, to say the least. You could say he's undefeated in the UFC. His pace, his wrestling, his cardio is insane. It is otherworldly. It is different. Um, but as we get closer... Gosh, I just keep thinking of how really, really good Sean O'Malley is. I mean, incredibly good on the feet. Yep. Underrated grappling. Not to the point that I think, you know, I see Sean O'Malley pulling off a submission or, you know, he gets taken. Although he could. You never he know. Could. His jiu-jitsu is not bad. Yep. Um, not that I see that he'll necessarily be able to defend every takedown. I think his butt is going to touch the canvas at least, you know, once around. But he does a pretty good job of escaping and getting back to his feet. And and he's pretty good when he gets his butt on the ground. Pretty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's not bad, right? Yep. And, and and his striking is so good. Yep. Um. He's so slick, so uh, just so powerful and precise. I mean, everything about him is good. So I'm sticking with my Marab. Initial thought that I've had the whole time since the fight was announced. But as we get closer and closer, I'm starting to think maybe Sean O'Malley gets this done. That, you know, Marab has to be perfect for 25. Sean has to be perfect for like 15 seconds. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he, he could be yep. losing every round. And then still knows that that takedown is coming. Because it's not like Marab is going to go up three rounds on him. And then for round four and five, he's just going to be like, all right, now I'm working on the outside and, and I'm backpedaling. Now you got to come chase me. Like, he's always going to be yep. moving forward. He's yep. always going to. So Sean is. He wants to finish Sean. Right. And, yep. he, and Sean is always going to know that dude is coming straight at me. And I know he's shooting. I know he's coming for an entry. Yep. You know, I know Marab's saying, you know, don't be surprised if I strike with him. Sir, I will be surprised if you strike with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so as we get closer, I'm thinking Sean uh, Sean may get this done. Which way did the picks leader and all-time <laughs> picks champion in MMA junkie history? Dude, I was riding I'm I was riding Marab the whole time just like you like you mentioned. I mean, I think he broke it down perfectly. I think just probably in the last couple weeks or so, maybe it was after I saw like the the cut picture, you know, and then Marab just sort of just being sort of like kind of maybe more erratic on social media and, and I hate even looking that far into something but when I you know so I, I was trying not to look too much in that but then you know watching the media day and just it seemed like two different guys showing up one was full of confidence the other one was confident in himself but just not as his normal boisterous self and I felt like Sean just was just oozing confidence yep. um he just looked so prepared and so ready. So I actually went with O'Malley on this one. I wow. swapped. I was developed Philly the whole time, and I think probably within this past month, and even leading into this picks, I was like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but then when it came time to put it, I was like, I'm, I think I'm going to ride with the champ on this one. So I'm I'm, I'm going to champ on this one. i tell you what's funny is, uh, so I was hosting USC Unfiltered yesterday, so I was not at the media day, but I was watching it. Um, Marab taking that little sip of water out of the, cap of the thing and actually not doing a good I don't know it just yeah. I, I was like are you that close on Wednesday that like you, you, you can't even just like yeah. control I don't think your, I even noticed oh that. my yeah you might have had your head down like he literally pours water into a cap like this and then by the way he missed most of it as he tried to put it in his mouth but I'm like is the weight cut that tight yeah. that you can't just have a small little sip or of just bottle right here. You know, like yeah. I mean, if you're gonna need to wet your whistle, just wet your whistle. I right. mean, but can you not know. make it through? I don't know. I just Twenty did, minutes. I just you know, like, without needing the water in, in the I first place. I, I didn't like that. Yeah, that's that's shit. I, I mean, that. that's that's a tell. So you went with Sean O'Malley. I went with O'Malley I, on that I, one. I feel like uh, I feel like, but I would not be sad if Marab pulls it out because I mean, we've seen oh, Marab do his thing, man. We see Marab do his thing. I just. I think I think the striking is going to be a difference. I think O'Malley, if he's just able to, what he was able to do to Aljo, I'm just like, I can't I can't erase that off my head right now. Man. If Sean O'Malley has a highlight reel finish in the sphere, I mean, it's going to be nuts. That's going to be nuts. Uh, all right, Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. I got to be honest with you, I, 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 
I'm torn on this one too because Shevchenko, if you go back, and, and, and I've said this in, in a couple different spots where I've talked about this fight, going if you go back, Shevchenko has actually won more rounds out of the two. She has more rounds, but Grasso has the submission, and she had the late rally yep. to, to salvage draw. a draw. Yep. Now, granted, she only salvaged the draw because of one judge's scorecard, and if that changes, it's Shevchenko. So logic, it's I mean, stylistically, skill-wise, they are matched up perfectly. Like, yep. I think they have shown they are on the same level. Like, I know Valentina is one of the all-time greats, and you can't argue with her accomplishments, but I think Alexa has proven that she has risen to that level. And so as far as athletes and execution, like, they are on the same level. Um, you know, you could probably say Valentina has a little bit better wrestling, although Grasso did have the submission, so her grappling is there. I think most people would, would consider Shevchenko the better kicker out of the two, that she has more dynamic striking, whereas Alexa you think more of as a traditional boxer, not that she doesn't kick at all, but she has slick hands. So stylistically you break all that down. They're evenly, evenly matched. But it feels like to me that Shevchenko has won more of the of the of the time, but she hasn't been able to walk away with the victory yet. So I don't know if that means that Shevchenko is kind of due, so to speak, and that Grasso has kind of gotten I don't want to say lucky because she's earned it, you know. But if she's gotten fortunate in some spots to to get the two results that she's had, or if you just say, well, listen, as great as Shevchenko is, and as much as she's able to win these rounds. Grasso finds a way every single time to prevent the losing. So I'm torn. I think I'm leaning Shevchenko, which is crazy because she hasn't won one yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why am I picking her in the third? But it, it, that makes me feel dumb too. Like why am I picking against Grasso, <laughs> yeah. who is one zero and one? So which way did you lean on this one? I'm. It's we're opposite days. I think we're gonna be on the same page in the next one, maybe. But maybe you'll spread me. I Grasso. have picked Shevchenko every other fight, right? And I've been wrong. This one. Like the last fight, I think I'm rolling with the champ. When I, uh, you know, and you mentioned her boxing, mentioned her striking. When we did the open workout the other day, she looked probably the best I've ever seen her hit. Granted, it's hitting mitts. Right. Nobody's punching back. Yeah. yeah. You know, you you're pretty you're, good. When you're not up, dodging she looked. Anything. She looked incredible. I thought her hand speed. I thought she just looked in good spirits. Um, she stayed consistent. Her her mentality. Her overall appearance. I mean, she's maintained the just. She's very. It's just solid. I haven't seen any sort of fluctuation, weird shit, you know, like very respectful, um, but also very sure of herself. And I figure this time, I mean, I, I, I'm i due to give her a shot. And I think she has the skill set to back it up. And this is no slight against Shevchenko. I've rolled with her the past two fights. She's always been like this unbeatable yep. thing in my head, you know, and I just couldn't not pick against her. And then you see... Granted, I thought she did enough to win the last one, right, right. but still, you know, does not count as a, as a win, you know, and that's two against her again. And I think I just feel like uh, it's my time to give Grasso the chance yeah. to actually earn it, and maybe this will be the one that Shevchenko pulls up because I didn't pick her. But I think Alexa just looks really good right now, and I think she's just uh, – I just feel like, you know, with the whole crowd going to be build, built around her and just boosting her up – I feel like most of the Mexican fighters going to go in there. They have just an extra. They they got an extra boost going into the night. Mm -hmm. um, that's not meaning the judges, even though Shevchenko, you know, <laughs> told her stories about past judges or whatever, um, which is was a crazy little story. If we go back and listen to some of her, she talked about some fights she took in China, which is crazy. That was wild. Um, she was like, "You have to knock them out for like thirty minutes because if you knock them out for like three minutes, they're just getting back up." up. <laughs> and be like, nope, keep going. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, I think I think Alexa is. Uh, She's fighting great, and I think she wants to represent Mexico well. So I think she's not going to give up for anything. And uh, and I just think her striking is so good. I was always questioning how good her striking was compared to Valentina's. Like you said, Valentina, when it comes to the kicks, I mean, her, her kicks and stuff are great. But, man, Alexa's hands look so quick. Yep. And uh, the fact that it gets on the ground, I'm leaning towards Alexa getting a submission again. So I think Valentina does not want it to get it to the ground. So if it stays a striking battle – if she can keep the distance and keep the, surprise Alexa with the kicks, but I think Alexa is going to just jump into boxing mode. And I think she has better hands right now. All right, lead the way. I'm Brian Ortega and Diego Lopez. Let's see if we're on opposite sides uh, for all three. I, as much as I like or Ortega, and how can you say no to those eyes, Diego? I, I can't. I can't go against Diego. I went T City. Did you? we are literally <laughs> opposites on everything? I, went I think maybe it's just a matter of me. Just uh, you know, one uh, his. Uh, I just feel Diego. He's fighting so good right now. He really uh, is. That, uh, but Ortega, he could be pulled one out when I didn't think that he was 
fighting at the same level, and he surprised. Not, he didn't surprise me. He just showed up to be the Ortega that I expected. It um, scares me a little bit, right? Because Ortega, we we know the whole situation about the Danny Gay fight, and it was Ortega who needed the weight class to be moved up, and then after the weight class was moved up, then he was sick anyway. And this was yep. not that long ago; it was you know two months ago. So I do have a little bit of concern. I just feel like T City has been in there against. The, the elite, I mean, yep. the best of the yep. best. The what he did against Yair was just ridiculous. Unbelievable. I mean, like, you look at that and you're like, oh, okay. because I was literally, when you look at the two losses going in, I was like, maybe it's not the same T City. I was like, maybe he's just not there. And then he <laughs> finishes them in uh, the round three, 58 seconds round three. I mean, it's just like, oh, okay. Never mind. I was wrong. You're still there. You're still there. But if anything else, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm riding the hype of Lopez. Lopez is just. He's fighting so good right now. It's that kid's time. I think that kid has future potential to be a champ, and I think this is going to be one of those ones where, it, depending on this performance, it sets him up uh, for maybe potential next shot or maybe one more shot. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think this kid, He's. He, I feel like he's just getting better and better, and uh, I feel like we're. He, he's still at the beginning of, like, his, his story. So maybe even if he doesn't get this time, it's not like it's going to be hard on you know it's not going to hurt him that bad because he's losing to T City for for beat's sake. But I think I think he's going to get it. I think he's going to get it, and I wouldn't be surprised um, if this one is the Jiu Jitsu match that we wanted to see in the Gilbert Burns uh, match with Brady. If these guys take it to the ground, it'd be interesting to see who, who's able to kind of get it. Ortega's got some incredible submissions, but Diego, man, he's tough. He's explosive. It's Great like the prize. stoner against like just like the the upcoming badass, you know. Like there's something. T said he's he's just so smooth. He's just like he's so just relaxed and just you know um, so peaceful outside of fighting. And then you see him kind of switch into that mode. But um, I just wonder if you know if right now was the right time to come back. If he's as ready as he should be to to go, jump back into this thing. So. We'll see, but yeah, I went. Uh, I went Lopez. Wow, we are opposite on the, all the three of the top. I love, I'm telling you, that's I'm crazy. But, we don't but, do that. Up, but, but that doesn't happen that often. Doesn't happen very often. And 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 let me. Be, and I think you kind of said similarly. Um, but I will say, in all three of those matchups, I completely understand the other side of the equation. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going. I'm so convicted in these three picks that I have already sent my mortgage payment yeah. to to the <laughs> broker. You know what I mean? To no, absolutely not. So um, I'm pumped, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, all right, listen, uh, just a quick reminder, I guess. Everything is a little bit later this week. Um, I, I haven't asked anybody, but I'm assuming the reason is they want it to be dark outside yep. uh, because the Sphere graphics obviously look insanely better when it's uh, – you can see them. If you, if you haven't seen the Sphere during the day, like, if they're bright and you can see them and yeah. it looks good, but, like, it just looks way better at night. And Even the Sphere, when it's turned off, it looks – it's yeah. just a black – oval sitting there it's just so nondescript you're just like what is that it's so fu- I, I've, I've told the story before but it's so funny like when they were building the sphere like we all heard the stuff about it but i think everybody was just like what the hell do we need another venue for and yeah you know what i mean like so it's round like who cares and you saw it there but when they, yeah. fr- they turned they it, turn on, it on everybody's like, like oh what, was, what? Okay. tell me more about this again like okay. this is awesome so yeah because we stared at that building forever and it was just like so just like Ugh. okay, okay, what's the big deal? <laughs> and then they turn it on, and you see, and they did the perfect because they turned it on at night for yep. the first time. Turn it, it on just at night, like, Fourth of July. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> got it. Yeah, I understand now. Oh, I understand so cool, now. Man. It is, it is so fantastic. So yeah, it should be interesting. I'm, I'm hoping that um, if, if the internet is decent, I will be streaming the uh, ceremony way in tonight. If not, of, of course, the UFC they, they, they pay for the internet, so they'll have it. <laughs> So you can always go to the broadcast, ESPN but yeah, I'm looking good. forward. To, yeah, ESPN. I think <laughs> ESPN gotta, pays a billion, okay. so they'll be good. They're okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to. But um, yeah, it should be interesting. They're bringing everybody for the press. Absolutely yeah. everybody, Seems which a is crazy. Seems a little unnecessary. Usually, when they do something like that, it's like a big um, seasonal kickoff or something. Like, there's no reason to bring everybody. It's, it's just out of norm. But I do like the fact that if they're they're going to go big. They want everybody. I think they want the spectacle to see the stage just full. They definitely of do. Fighters. I, it is. It is kind of. It's backwards because you're so visually. And, and you know what, man? Look for all those fighters. They're a part of this. I'm sure it's, it's for cool. them like as well. They, they, it's pushed for them as well. They get to be. Up they there didn't the get stage. to do media day, right? You but know, it doesn't. So. It doesn't make for a very good press conference because you're trying to make sure everybody gets a question. Yeah. You're trying to make sure. And so because of that, 
it gets spread out a lot, and you don't get as much like with the headliners. And it's still and, only thirty minutes. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I was looking at the time. I was like, "Is that correct?" Check-in is at six. It starts at seven. It ends at seven thirty. There's a media mixer that starts check-in at seven forty-five. You're gonna bring twenty people out there. Have everybody wait to get in the thing, and then you're only going to do a. They better not have big voice announcer guy going. And in the first fight of the night, <laughs> hailing from you Guadalajara, know like, bro. You know they're going to. <laughs> uh, then they're like, I, I sorry need, guys, we have ten minutes for I questions. I need a sheet to drop. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna be like Morgan, she- Oscar, last question. They've done that. Yeah, we need a sheet to drop. But it's outside. You can't drop a sheet. I need a sheet to the, drop. They, like, they're <laughs> all just sitting up there holding the sheet. They're like, you guys ready? Three, two, drop. What? <laughs> Okay, that would be a spectacle. That'd be very Vegas. Um, yeah, I better, so yeah. I better not hear. Because that is, that is something. I mean, I am – so when I was thinking about that, I was like, okay, the night's we're first waiting fight. late. <laughs> Call him Chee-Wee-Wee. Chee-Wee-Wee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give a big Chee-Wee-Wee for Raul Rosas Jr. Oh <laughs> Dude, and you know people people are going to be Chee-Wee-Weeing when he gets out there. Oh <laughs> my gosh! No. So yeah, so okay, so that's press conference tonight. Yeah, so ceremony uh, weigh-ins are late tomorrow too. Yep, yeah, and that that one there is so that one's got actually got a, a fun QA in front of that one. So that's got Brandon Moreno, um, where to go? Uh, Brandon Moreno, Yari Rodriguez, and Tracy Cortez. So that's a huge favorite that right big. there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's tomorrow, 6 p.m. local, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before the ceremony weigh-ins, which are late in the evening, 7 p.m. here. So that's 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern. That's crazy. That's the only bad thing is because you want to get those images out. You know what I mean? You want to get people seeing it. And so yeah. I, I do think the late – but it just has to be because they want it to be they dark. Got, you got to have the sphere. Yeah. You got to have the sphere. The sphere, again – And sunset you know, right now is like 6.51 p.m. in Vegas. Yeah. So it's like perfect timing. I mean, and I think if people forget, you know, like everybody's so worried about the inside, but the exoskeleton – that thing is fantastic and it looks so sharp and it's gonna be so bright so it's gonna be it's gonna be weird to even maybe have it even be part of the frame i mean even if we widen all the way out the thing is so big depending on where we're at who knows how much of that's even gonna be in the backdrop and hopefully then it's lit it's not backlighting everybody in front it's not gonna be blowing out your images so it should be interesting but regardless it's gonna be unique to be down there yeah. uh and see it all and just take it all in and i mean again if they didn't do it we'd probably feel weird that they didn't do something down there yeah like if this you know was last just year they did the whatever. t-mobile in the, in the toshiba plaza we were out right. there and saw that and that was cool the fans got to see it so this is a chance for the fighter or the fans to kind of Get out there, see the sphere, see all the fighters, you know, take some pictures with the sphere and just sort of get that last little hype. But, yep. yeah, I'm looking forward and to if it. And if you are in town for whatever reason you didn't see it, there is, like, a fan experience uh, both Friday night and Saturday afternoon. Uh, Friday night starts at 4 p.m. Saturday afternoon it starts at noon. So that's where they do a bunch of, like, guest fighter appearances and stuff like that. Did you see the press release that uh, Dustin Poirier is going to be, like, guest bartending at a, at a bar inside the Venetian for, no. the, uh, for Anheuser-Busch? Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you want to get Dustin Poirier to serve you a beer, that'll be over at the Venetian. That's kind of cool. Kind of cool, right? Dude, I'll tell you, if, if they offer up some spicy margaritas in these things, I am in. Bro. The spicy margaritas, the they have that other Spicy margaritas at the, win- at the kickoff at the kickoff. everybody's, win. like, doing that now. Like, a lot of places have been embracing it. I am all for it. Like, Unbelievable. I mean, margaritas was okay before, but spicy, spicy margaritas, margaritas? It's, it's next level. Next level. It's next level. I mean, that was just the kickoff dinner. <laughs> All right, it certainly kicked off the night. That's for sure. Yeah, we got we got going that night. Uh, yeah, listen, I'm excited for this show. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Uh, apologize if if uh, it was too much talk about the venue itself, but I promise you, man, once you experience it, I think you'll understand it all on Monday. If it felt silly to you leading up to it, and you're like, God damn it, just talk about the fights. I promise you, on Monday morning, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure you're gonna have a different perspective of it. And at the end of the day, I'm still a theater kid. Yeah, <laughs> I get I get excited for this stuff. But I mean, I hope if anything, I hope that. That's what came off. I'm like, we're not trying to just. I'm not. Sh- we're not shilling the show for the show just because we we like the UFC. Like, right. I really believe that this is going to be a unique spectacle, and I, I'm generally, as a theater geek, excited to see the spectacle of what yep. they're going to do because I know what it takes to put on even just a, a just a, a, a small sliver of film production. So to let alone bring that in with this, I'm so There's, I'm so into it. There is legit one venue like this in the world. You know what I mean? They tried yeah. to build another one in London, and the London City Council said, "Hell no, that's too much light on the outside." It's it's, 
it's unbelievable. But in Vegas, but I mean, there's <laughs> one <laughs> yeah. venue Vegas, like, like this. Oh, bright lights yeah. that make no sense. Bro, put, yeah, put, sure. Make two of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, put, just, put one on the south <laughs> side of the strip. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited, man. As a Vegas resident, and just yeah, like you said, kind of a tech geek and theater geek and all that stuff, man. This is going to be a cool show. Somebody that's been to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mixed martial arts events in uh, in their lifetime, uh, this is something truly unique and special. So I'm excited for it. So uh, shout out to everybody over at patreoncom slash the MMA Road Show. We will have a wrap up of this on the end of half episode, uh, so we'll get some instant reaction of everything that happens in the fear on Saturday night. For everybody else, we'll talk more next week. Uh, hopefully you guys all enjoy the show. And, of course, thanks for listening.